It's Kay with Crafting Cousins. We're so happy you decided to stop by our channel today. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, Trish and I thank you so much. Today, we have three special crafts, all new and all about the summer. So grab your favorite summer beverage, like some lemonade, and let's get to crafting, y'all. Hey, y'all, it's Kay. So the big joke at my house is that flamingos are my spirit animal. I know that's not really a thing, but that's what I always tell my husband. So for this project, I'm going to use a 14 inch wood round that I got from Hobby Lobby. They have a couple of thicknesses, the thicker the better. I'm going to be using these two packages of napkins. They came from the Dollar Tree. I love them, y'all. I'm going to be using this two and a half inch wired ribbon. It is made by Expressions, so it's very good quality. I think I originally got mine at craftoutlet.com. This black and white striped ribbon is one and a half inches wide. It is wired and it came from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint and some acrylic paint in the color Polish Pink. Going to use some Mod Podge my hot glue gun, and a zip tie. And I believe that's all. So the first thing I did was take my ruler and I drew a line at about seven inches down and eight and a half inches down. Later, I did change that to eight inches. So you may want to go ahead and do yours at eight inches. So I taped off what will be the bottom line and I just used little painter's tape and I thought you might like a little hint here. What do you do when that paint is just sealed shut from your Waverly chalk paint because you didn't wipe it off well the last time you used it? Well, I just used my can opener that I got from Lowe's when I bought some paint for one of my rooms. And I just pry that thing off around the middle and it works extremely well. And then I'm going to give the top part of my wood round two good coats of the white Waverly chalk paint and let that dry extremely well. I'm going to take off my painter's tape and just reuse it on the next strip that I'm going to paint. I just place it back down and then I'm going to redraw the line. As I told you, I was going to take a half an inch off. And then I'm going to come in with the white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the edges of my tape so that it will seal it and I won't have the pink paint bleeding under. And that pink paint did take two good coats for good coverage. So I figured out that the only way I could match up this napkin and make it work because it is not quite wide enough is to cut off two bottom pieces of two different napkins. That was the only way to match it up. And you want to make sure you do remove that white backing so that it is single ply when you start to Mod Podge it. I decided I would use my glue stick and put a small ribbon of glue at the top so that I can lay down my napkin and keep everything really straight right next to that pink line. I'm going to use a thin chiseled brush and put down a thin coat of the Mod Podge because it doesn't take too much and we'll just smooth down that napkin and get out as many wrinkles as possible. Then I'm just going to cut off some of this excess and let it dry really well and start working on the top. As you can see, I went off camera and did a little fussy cutting on the second napkin. And I just cut out Let's Flamingle. I cut around the wording and then I cut pretty precise around the actual flamingo. And then I removed the backing and I'm going to come in first of all and place down the words towards the pink could have come up just a little bit more, so watch your spacing on that. But I'm going to, first of all, get this kind of stuck down, if you will, and then I will come back and do a little bit more Mod Podge around it. But I want this to dry first. And then I take the bottom from the second blue napkin and I'm going to start cutting off pieces. I'll use my ruler to line it up. And I want to make sure that I match that corner piece as closely as possible. Just think of it as putting up wallpaper. Eventually I did get it matched up pretty well and then I just used a little Mod Podge to make sure it stays in place. Now that the top part is dry, I'm going in and I'm going to cover on top of the Let's Flamingo and the Flamingo and the entire white as well so that it is the same finish all the way across. 
When the blue at the bottom was dry, I did give it a good coat of Mod Podge and then I let that dry. Then I'm going to go in now and trim off the ends and then I come back with some sandpaper and just sand in a downward motion till we get off all of those scraggly edges. Now I'm going to mark the center towards the bag and I'm going to come in with a soda can tab, bend it in the middle and use some hot glue to secure it to the bag so that I can hang the piece later. Now I'm going to take this one and a half inch black and white ribbon and I'm just going to fashion it in my hand with eight inch tails and four inch loops, two on each side and make a very simple bow. I take some floral wire and twist it around and I leave it long enough so that I'm going to twist the second piece of ribbon on top of the black and white. I don't want my flamingos to be upside down, so I cut two lengths of ribbon, just making sure that I will have two whole flamingos down at the bottom about the same length. And the funny part is they're actually facing each other. I'm going to dovetail those ends. And then I'm going to come in and just sort of gather the two pieces together, just make it pleated in the middle. And then I will wrap a piece of floral wire around them extra from what is on the black and the white. And that will just kind of hold it in place for now. And here I am just laying it down on top of the black and white and I end up using the wire from the black and the white and I just sort of wrap it side to side and secure it into place. And here you can see me folding it around. We'll secure that in the back later. I'm just going to make two simple loops a little smaller than the black and white. And again, I'm just going to put it on top of the bows I use my wire again and just twist it down onto everything. At this point, I am going to secure the wire that I've been using, wrap it around everything nice and tight, and then we'll cut off that excess because we no longer need it. And at this point, I am going to wrap that excess ribbon around the back and trim off any excess. Using my hot glue, we'll secure it to the knot at the back. And then to hide everything at the front, I'm going to take this thinner black and white ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and just tie it in a knot in the back around the entire piece. And that covers up any mess that we made and we'll cut off the excess at this point. And that's what our bow looks like. I think it's really cute because it shows off the flamingos. And now I'm just going to secure it to the side of our piece. And with that, this project is complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use some wood slices. I wanted four, but I only had two, so we're gonna use what we had on hand. Some acrylic paint in red, green, black, and white, and some clear acrylic sealing spray. Now you could also use Mod Podge or any other brand of sealing spray. I am not one who changes out their decor for every season. But as a creator, I love to add a little bit of each season to my home. I have found the easiest way to do that is either by decorating my tear tray or making small signs that I can incorporate into my decor. But another fun way is to make coasters. There are so many different ways that you can make coasters and they always come in handy. For these, we're going to use some wood slices and we are going to make these watermelon slices. Now, the fun thing about this is that you could make these any fruit that you want to. There are so many tropical flavors for the summer and all you got to do is just freehand them on here. 
fruit is never perfect so you don't have to be perfect with your design either which makes this a great project for the kids this is something fun that you can do with them while they are out of school and it gives them a way of adding to the decor something they can be proud of now for these I started out with a white base coat and I am using acrylic paint for these projects that have moisture in them acrylic paint is the best way to go because moisture can destroy chalk paint now you are going to be sealing these so if chalk paints all you have on hand just make sure that you seal them really well once my two coats of white paint had dried I come back in with my red acrylic paint and I'm just doing an inner circle now you see I am not worried about this being perfect if you've ever sliced open a watermelon you know they're not perfect and I just love doing projects like this once I get my red paint down and I let it dry just a little bit, I'm going to come back with a darker green color and I just paint a little edge around it, making sure that I leave some of the white for that area between the rind and the meat of the watermelon. Now, I didn't have to make it get really dark. I like the striations in it because a watermelon has striations in it as well. Now for our seeds, all we're going to do is take a round paintbrush, we dip it in our black acrylic paint, you kind of smoosh it down and then pull it up and it's going to give you like a teardrop and that is perfect for your seeds. Once you get those on there, set it aside and let it completely dry. Then the last thing you need to do is seal this. I'm using a sealing spray just because I prefer it, but you could also use Mod Podge for this. You just want to make sure that you seal it well. And then once it dries, this project is complete. Do you like to create with paper? Create beautiful journals, cards, embellishments, and interactive mini albums? Well, you should go and check out our channel, Crafting Cousins Create. There, we slow down the videos and give you step-by-step -step instructions that make it easy for everyone from the beginning to the advanced crafter to follow along. There will be a link to that channel in the description box below. We hope that you'll come over and join us. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these 12 inch wood rounds that I got from the Dollar Tree. They have a hanger at the top. We're going to reuse that on this project, but really nice quality. I'm also going to be using one of these lemon napkins that I got at the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of 16. I'm going to be using one of these floral picks. I got it at Walmart. Also, this wooden word, welcome, also came from Walmart. Some wooden beads from my stash and one tumbling tower block. This cute two and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby in the spring section. Some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white and ink. Some acrylic paint in the color King's Gold. My easy bow maker and a zip tie. And finally, I'm going to be using some parchment paper, some cling wrap, my hot glue gun, and some Mod Podge. So the first thing you want to do is remove this little hanger at the top. Do save that, we're going to reuse it. And then I'm going to put on just one coat, kind of a medium coat, and cover the entire front of this piece. Later on, I did end up covering the back as well. Here's a quick tip. Did you know that all of these boxes of saran wrap and parchment paper have little tabs on the end and that if you push those in each time, it holds the roll into the package and makes it much easier to tear? Just a little tip in case you didn't know that. I'm going to tear off two pieces of the parchment paper a little bit longer than the 12 inches that we need so we have a little hanging over. Then I'm going to place one piece of parchment paper down onto my mat to protect it lay my painted wood round on top of that then i'm going to come in with a piece of saran wrap and straighten it out and place it on top of my wood round 
and it barely fits from side to side, but only if you get it perfectly straight. And the next thing we're going to do now is take our napkin and kind of center it onto the wood round because it's a little bit larger. And you want to make sure that it is one ply that you do take off that bottom white piece. Then I'm just going to place another piece of parchment paper on top, and then I'm going to have a hot iron and I'm going to iron it on. If you're not careful, you will iron in some wrinkles. It does take a little practice, I think, with this. I've only done it a few times myself, but once it is adhered to the bottom, I come in and I trim that up with my scissors, and then I also come in and sand the edges as well with a downward motion. And at this point, we want to go in with some Mod Podge. I'm using the gloss finish, and I'm going to seal the front of it really well. Just a light coat, though. I painted the word welcome with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. You could use whatever black paint you have. I'm going to take six of the wooden beads and string them onto a chenille stem, and I'm going to paint them also in the Waverly ink chalk paint. Then I took four of the beads, strung those onto a chenille stem, and I painted them in this acrylic paint called King's Gold. Now I'm just going to stick them down in some styrofoam and I'm going to let them dry thoroughly. I took a tumbling tower block and I marked a line on it at half an inch in, and then I just go around the circle tracing off the sides of that block. Each time about a half an inch in, I wasn't too precise with it. And by the way, I did start just inside where the two um, holes are at the top because I knew I could cover up the mistakes at the beginning with the bow that I'm going to make. And I did draw the circle all the way around, but you know what? That's not even that necessary. Now I'm coming in with the black chalk paint, the color ink, and I'm going to paint every other square in the black. And that's what it looks like so far. We'll let that dry, and in the meantime, we'll make a bow. I'm using my Easy Bow Maker, but this is a very simple bow. I'm just going to use seven inch tails, three and a half inch loops, I'm going to do two loops on each side. You just twist that ribbon every time you come between the pegs, and we'll just cut that off, dovetail the ends. I'm going to come in with a zip tie, fasten it right around the middle, and tighten it down. Although I do wish I had put a piece of wire in the back before I had totally tightened it, but that's okay, we'll fix it later. So I'll dovetail the ends, give it a little fluffing, and with that, that bow is done. As soon as the black paint was dry, I went in with the white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint every other one. And I make sure that I cover up the line at the top. This just gives it a little cohesiveness and just a little bit different look to the piece. We'll reuse that twine that was at the top and string on our beads, five on each side, starting with the black, finishing with the black, and then I'll just divide them on each side. And that's how the piece will hang. Now I'm going to take my bow, and yes, I did forget that wire, but I'm going to take a little piece of stiff wire that I had, and I'm going to wire it into the back behind my zip tie. And once I do that, I'm going to twist it around that little floral piece that I got from Walmart, a little bit up from the bottom, and I just kind of bend the stem around and so that it gives my piece a nice rounded shape. I'm going to place on the word welcome here towards the bottom. I'm just using hot glue and my precision tip glue gun. And then I'm going to place my bow kind of to the right side of the piece. I'll use first some hot glue right behind the bow itself. And then I do come back and place some on the stem at the bottom. And with that, this piece is complete. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.